So Theresa May has been quite clear that she does not want an Australian-style point system to control immigration post-Brexit. Now, the significance of that is that Vote Leave, which uh, her Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson was one of the main champions of, they argued throughout the referendum campaign for an Australian-style point system. Theresa May says that she doesn't like it because she thinks it doesn't actually control immigration. It could, it could lead to higher numbers. Now, I think what you see going on here is May is in some ways defending her own record as Home Secretary because they had a points-based system for non-EU migration and they didn't even get non-EU migration down to the tens of thousands. But then you also see something else, which is one of the part of the appeal of an Australian style point system was that it enabled to, to, to yoke together the two parts of the Leave coalition. One one kind of wanted control and restrictions on immigration, the other wanted a kind of global Britain that was relatively open on immigration. The Australian style point system appealed to both. It's not clear though what Theresa May has in mind. I think it is also worth bearing in mind that just if you talk to people in the Home Office, they say that they just don't have the institutional capacity to, to institute a kind of visa programme for all EU migrants. Well, it's the tension between controls on immigration and Britain's trading relationship with EU countries once it does leave the European Union. The, the theory is that you can't really have strict controls on immigration whilst remaining in the single market. It doesn't seem as though European leaders are particularly keen to start reforms to what they've always said is a fundamental cornerstone of the way the bloc operates. And to benefit from the single market, you'd have to sign up to, those, to freedom of movement within the European Union with, with other European Union countries. So this is really difficult for Theresa May and as we've also seen she has been snubbed by world leaders at the G20 summit, the distance between her podium and that of Barack Obama's, the way in which the photograph was put together does look very awkward but I think in the long run this could benefit her because to have a very awkward summit before the Brexit negotiations begin properly is good for her because she could if she does manage to get a, a hard model of Brexit which is what those in her party are urging her for along with a strong trading relationship then she can say well look where I started I had world leaders absolutely furious with me European leaders turning their backs on me Barack Obama talked about Britain going to the back of the queue in trade negotiations, but I managed to secure us a deal anyway. But that's a big if because she still has to actually do those negotiations. And David Cameron spent the EU referendum campaign claiming that he'd had a very difficult start, but he never actually managed to recover from that, which was a fundamental flaw in his campaign. Well, I think the today's press conference was telling because it was the first time she has not looked in a kind of in command as Prime Minister. I think, there is a, I think today we saw the limits of how often she can keep saying Brexit means Brexit because Brexit means Brexit. Um, I think there's something else though, which is this, which is lots of the leaders at this world, at uh, the G20 summit, are on the way out. Barack Obama is terminated out as President of the United States. I think no one expects Francois Hollande to be re-elected as uh, President of France. And you know, there are lots of countries in Europe that would like to dump Jean-Claude Juncker as President of the European Commission. So I think we shouldn't get too... Um, uh, uh, obsessed about what these people have said because lots of them are on the way out the door. I mean, the thing that probably will cause some worries is what the Japanese present in this long list of demands for Brexit to the UK. But what Theresa May will try and kind of grab hold of, it, which she did in her press conference, is look, she has started talking to Australia, South Korea, Singapore, India, Mexico about free trade deals once Britain leaves the EU. I think that, that's what the government is going to try and present as a kind of good news of Brexit. Look at the progress we're making on these trade deals. Now, you obviously can't sign any of these deals until Britain has left the EU. And so there's a kind of question about how much progress is really being made. But I think that's how she'll try and do it. I think the crucial question comes, which is, what is the attitude both of the leaders elected in the French and German elections in 2017 and the new president of the United States? If TTIP dies, which I think is the most likely thing, that is the EU-US free trade deal, then um, there might be not much of a cue for Britain to end up skipping. I think, as James said, she hasn't looked as confident as she has in previous settings. And she's also had to answer some very difficult questions, or, or not answer them in her case, such as does she actually trust China? And she wasn't able to say fully today that, that she did. And that shows that the difficulties that she's now having as she starts work for real as Prime Minister after the honeymoon period where really everyone was away over the summer and thought she was doing a wonderful job, partly because Labour are in such a mess.